Good morning, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Also, I want to acknowledge the Earthly Mother, who is Wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson today and gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past, the events that are soon that are actually coming on the earth. Things that are soon to come on the earth as well. Man, there's some great information coming out. I actually had notes and everything ready for another video, a much bigger video I was going to actually do this morning. But then the Holy Spirit came on me this morning and told me to uh, concentrate on this one point. So I'm going to concentrate on this one point first in this video in order for people to understand how much uh, information has just been hidden and how our understanding of things has just been so, you know, hidden from, from our consciousness for such a long time that it's just, uh, it's amazing because there's so many moving parts going on to keep this information secret, to keep it hidden. And even own people, our own, you know, community and our own family are complicit and keeping a lot of this information hidden, keeping our people from looking, keeping our people from searching for the truth. Even though, like I said, it's, it's prophesied this is going to happen. We still see the demons working to keep this information hidden. But it's going to be to no avail, of course. I was listening to uh, Elder Ayul's video yesterday, his live stream. So that brother was actually uh, doing some work yesterday. It was a beautiful thing because a few things I've been struggling with when I'm reading, he gave me clarification. I love the way he was also talking about how, you know, the Most High uses our different teaching styles in order to uh, connect with the people. And that is so true. You know, I might teach a certain way that, you know, gravitates to certain people. And he, he teaches a certain way that gravitates the way he is and other, other people. The Most High is calling many different people from many different walks of life. And we're not supposed to be exactly the same. And what he said was so true, talking about how, um, you know, they try to make pastors pretty much the same, sound the same. When I was in, uh, you know, when I actually went to school, and I was scared into uh, learning about the ministry. You can kind of see that a lot of these guys, they have the same monotone teaching style. Um, and they just all kind of sound the same. When growing up, uh, I went to Crystal Cathedral uh, for a while, for quite a while, actually. And uh, there was a Robert Schuler who was the pastor there. Uh, he taught a certain way. And then his son took over and his swear it was exactly as like a saying, like a clone. He had taught exactly the same way. A lot of times, a lot of these pastors and their kids end up taking over and just doing the same thing and just copying many of the same things that their fathers did. You know, make it, is, it just makes the congregation very passive, you know, and uh, it's kind of like maybe they're hypnotizing people. But I love the fact that, like, um, like Brother Aguil said, you know, we have different teaching styles and we're not supposed to change and we're supposed to do it exactly the way the Most High has made us. So I, I love that. And that's so very true. One of my brothers actually tell me exactly the same thing about how, you know, a lot of us are used. We all have different pieces and, you, you know, people have to go to different places to find the pieces, you know, and it's so, but as far as teaching the fact that this is our land and this is where we came from and digging and searching, I said, that's one thing that's a commonality between myself, you know, Carimio, um, UB News, Lil Moray, um, you know, all, the, all these other different brothers, you know, Elder Ayul, and there's a lot of other ones as well. You know, the King Drop, Lex Will. You know, we all have our own way of teaching. I said the Most High gives us all our pieces, and it's up to the nation. The Most High will lead, you know, with the Holy Spirit to find those pieces and put those pieces together in order to uh, get more understanding. But I think uh, this morning you're going to see an absolutely huge piece of the puzzle coming together. Oh, it's going to be a piece that's going to show you how Christianity 
and the Christians and the Catholics have fulfilled a huge part of biblical prophecy. They admit it themselves. And they're trying their damnedest to hide the fact that they've admitted their part in biblical history. How they were used to bring us down because of our um, participation in idolatry. And how this was prophesied in the Bible, other books, and even Hitler prophesied that this was going to happen. And we're going to talk about that as well. You know, like I said, the truth, the Most High puts the truth all over the place. And it's up to us through the Holy Spirit that he sends for us to be able to find this truth. And many of us, brethren, who have been called are the ones that are going to be leading the nation to find this truth. Many other brothers are stuck with just the Bible and the name, and that's, and that's fine. They've done a great job teaching us that. But now it's our job to go beyond that and bring the rest of the puzzle pieces together. This is the way the Most High has set it up. And we're just being used to do the job that the Most High has set up for us. Let's jump into this real quick. We're going to be starting with the Florentine Codex. It was amazing. I just kind of just jumped on Amazon this morning to kind of see how much the books were. And book one, there's only one left. And it's about $900 for that one book. That's the book we're going to be using this morning. You know, when you got a book that's $900, you got to kind of, you know, think to yourself, what kind of truth are they hiding in that book? The fact that on Amazon, where you can get books for just about anything, you know, and there's one book left and it's $900. For most people that would get these kinds of books, you know, they would read it and okay, you know, they from a historical perspective. But when you have the Holy Spirit rolling with you and guiding you, she takes you exactly to where you need to go and opens your eyes to see certain things. And that's why Elder Ayul really helped me yesterday when he was talking about how the churches start at the same time. I didn't really, a lot of things he said, the spirit puts on him to say, and sometimes it's, it's like it's directly speaking to me. I'm, you know, because they get, we used to go into their churches and they get worship from, especially making us worship them, worship there's those demons and us empowering those demons. And that's what it's always about. And he was talking about, especially like if you watch the movie, The Matrix, and it talks about how we were used as batteries in order to give them power. So there's so much information in these movies. And I said, The Matrix, I never really put that two and two together as far as the power or the power actually coming in these churches. But now it makes so much sense. Now, in this book right here, we're going to talk a little bit about them admitting. Well, actually, that's what the whole video is going to be about. Them admitting that um, they were used pretty much uh, to, to destroy us because of our uh, participation in idolatry. Now, when you, when they after, now, after we go through them admitting it, then we'll read a couple of the scriptures that actually shows that, you know, that this was going to happen. You know, they're not going to admit that. They're going to try to hide all this information. That's why we keep getting the pushback with the, hey, you guys were never over here. You guys were never over. No, you guys, this isn't your land. No, this isn't. I said, even from our own people. Because once you realize, like like uh, Elder Ayul said, you know, it would make sense that they would have a Jerusalem over there, but they would have one over here as well. And think of how much better, more grand the one over here would be because um, it wasn't tainted with being surrounded by um, Gentiles. It was the vast majority, of, I mean, the vast majority of the tribes were over here. They were able to uh, pretty much build a lot of these different things without outside influence because they were kept separate. These were the best lands. So that's why when they came, when the Gentiles came over here, it was like a paradise. 
that they just couldn't believe. But that was because they had didn't have their hands in absolutely any of the stuff that was going on over here. That's why it's so important for them to make sure that, hey, we don't know who built these things. We don't know who built this. Um, you know, they were just running out here butt naked the entire time. They didn't do anything. Oh, there's none of them left now, so therefore now this is our land. So they get to always pretty much dictate everything. Check this part out right here. In the Florentine Codex, this is book number one. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to read about them actually admitting this, his, this, uh, this history first. And then we'll go into some scriptures again to get clarification. And we can actually we can put, interject the names of the people who actually were the ones used for these things. This is page 61 in the Florentine Codex, book one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the um, 60s. I'm going to make a little paragraph I was going to read first. And then we'll continue uh, with what you can see. It says, uh, oh, our Lord. Well, let me give you the context here. These are actually the Catholics pretty much, you know, telling us what happened as far as the idolatry that we were participating in and in the Most High's um, response to that. So this is actually the Catholics talking, the Catholics and the Christians, all right? It says, Oh, our Lord, these idolaters who lived on thy earth, thou hast much abominated because of their evil life, because what they were, because what they were won't to be aroused. Here we go. Now we're over here where you guys can see it. Okay, so this, like I said, these are the Christians talking mess pretty much about our people, all right? Uh, they were wont to be aroused. Men's anger offended them. For they were wont to be soothsayers, to steal others' goods, to practice divination by means of knotted cords. And that is funny. Knotted cords, I was like, uh, those are rosaries. So you guys did exactly the same thing. All right. To practice divination by strewing grains of dried ma maize. And they slew things before the devils and demons, and they slew their sons. With them the debt was paid before carved stone, carved wood, and they ate the flesh of men. Thou hast waited long for these to turn from their evil lives. All right, so the Most High waited a very long time for us to turn away from worshiping these demons. He gave us ample opportunity to follow him and not follow these demons, okay? But because they wish not to turn from their lives, thou hast destroyed them. Thy vassals, the Christians, brought to an end their wickedness. They conquered them. Let's read that again. But because they wish not to turn from their lives, thou hast destroyed them. Thy vassals, the Christians, brought to an end their wickedness. They conquered them. So right there, they're admitting that they were used as vassals for the Most High to conquer us because of the, <clears throat> the fact that we were, you know, committing an idolatry and we wouldn't turn from our ways. So the Most High brought these Christians over to bring to an end our participation in idolatry, and they conquered us. So right here, this is huge information. When they're admitting themselves, this was written in the 1500s. So they knew exactly what was going on. It wasn't like they came over here not understanding what was going on. They were being used by the Most High to destroy us because of idolatry. Which was funny because then they ended up just continuing with the same practices, but we'll get into that later on. The Christ, the so-called Christians ended up doing exactly the same things that we did. So then they should pretty much expect the exact same result. But we'll get into that in another video. The main point here was that the Most High used the Christians. He brought them over here to destroy us for us participating in idolatry.
It was funny now, if you go down, it says, uh, if you read a little bit here, let's go to B. We'll continue. Oh, our Lord, since thou hast uh, so done this, will one say something? Will one say, why hast thou so done this? And will one dispute uh, with thee because thou hast so done this? Will one avenge himself on thee because of the punishment of the evil, the unrighteous? And if thou shalt destroy all the idolaters on earth, will one speak? Will one say, why didst thou thus? For all of them are thy creatures. So pretty much like, hey, you know, are you going to complain because the Most High decided to do this? So now, now you, I know, how are you going to question the Most High and his judgments? And it's funny because it's exactly the same thing that was talked about in Second Baruch 13. You know, when this stuff starts to happen to the other nations, he says, I don't want you guys to say, you know, why is, why is this happening? Why is this happening? You're going to know exactly why it's happening because you did exactly the same things that we did. Let me actually get it real fast. I actually have, happen to have the Cipher right here. <clears throat> Second Baruch, this is in the Cipher, chapter 13. Uh, I'll start at four. So that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has El Elohim brought upon us this retribution, say unto them, you and those like you, who shall have seen this evil, this is the evil and retribution which is coming upon you and upon your people in its destined time, that the nations may be thoroughly smitten, and then they shall be in anguish. And if they say at that time, for how long, you will say to them, ye who have drunk the strained wine, drink ye also of its dregs, the judgment of the lofty one, who has no respect of persons. On this account, he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them as his enemies, because they sinned. That's exactly what they're talking about right here. Because we sinned, because we committed idolatry. He says, right, that's why you, you got to go back to that. He says, you know, because on this account, he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them as his enemies because they sinned. So that's why he afflicted us as his enemies. He brought this other nation. He brought the Christians over to afflict us as his enemies because we were committing idolatry. It says, then, therefore, were they cha chastened that they might be sanctified. But now, ye peoples and nations, ye are guilty because ye have always trodden down the earth and use the creation unrighteously. For I have always benefited you, and ye, and ye have always been ungrateful for the beneficence. That goes hand in hand with uh, Second Baruch, chapter 13. Now you start to understand why these books are hidden. Now you start to understand why, you know, they take out certain verses and take out certain things. I said, because the exactly same thing that you're now saying to us, the Most High is saying exactly the same things now to the other nations. He's saying exactly the same thing now that they were saying to us here in B right there. Hey, you know, don't complain about it. You're pretty much what saying. Hey, don't worry. Hey, don't complain. The Most High can do whatever he wants. If he chooses to use us to destroy you, hey, what, who are you to say anything? You're committing, uh, you know, idolatry, so therefore we're able to do all these things to you. So don't complain about it. Well, now they can they continued with their idolatry, and now we're at the end, and now we're telling them the same things. And I was like, no, 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 man, that, that, those books aren't canonized. We didn't we didn't approve those books. So if we didn't approve those books, and that's that those prophecies aren't aren't don't apply to us. Those you know those are things that we don't agree with. I said, like, you guys had no problem you know using certain books before, but now because you guys have changed certain things or hidden certain books, now you guys into the judgment is now gonna you know is not going to follow through, but that's not true. So like I said, he's not a respecter of persons. If he's, if he allowed you guys to come over here and destroy us for idolatry, and you guys do exactly the same things that we were doing, then what do you think is going to happen to you? Now, let's continue for a real quick. Let's see here. Baruch, chapter 4. So now we can implement the word Christians, Catholics, 
and to certain ones of the uh, certain of these prophecies, which will then make much more sense. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's start at nine. For when she saw the wrath of the Most High coming upon you, she said, "Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion, the Most High hath brought upon me great mourning, for I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. Right? He brought these Christians upon them in the captivity, slavery. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many." who for the sins of my children am left desolate. Our sins were we were committing idolatry because they departed from the law of God right there. Idolatry. We departed from the, the law of the Most High. We were following demons. Says, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. So we didn't follow his commandments. We were committing idolatry, sacrificing to demons. Just like I talked about in the book of Solomon, uh, the Testament of Solomon. All right. So let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. For he hath brought a nation. He had brought Christians. Okay. He, for he hath brought Christians upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language, who neither reverenced old man nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. So now that, that nation that was brought upon us, Christians, they admitted it themselves. Catholics, they admitted it themselves. Because it's a Catholic who wrote this book. Christians, Catholics, he brought them from over the, over the ocean to come over here and to destroy us. See that? That's why this is such a key. We go up there to that it says right here, but because they wish not to turn from their lives, thou hast destroyed them. Thy vassals, the Christians, brought to an end their wickedness. They conquered them. So the vassals were the Christians. That was a shameless nation of people that was brought over the, over the great waters to destroy us over here for us participating in idolatry. Now we're going to read here. I want to say this was uh, first Nephi. Let me make sure. So people sit there and say, oh, these books aren't any good. These books aren't any good. And this information goes exactly with what's in the scriptures. It goes exactly with prophecy. This would be 1 Nephi chapter 13, 11. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Behold, the wrath of the Most High is upon the seed of thy brethren. What was that wrath for? Idolatry. Okay. And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the spirit of the Most High that it came down and wrought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who were in the promised land. Okay, so he came over here. The promise it's saying the promised land is over here. It's telling you right there that they were brought over to the promised lands. They were brought over to the promised lands. And it came to pass that I beheld the spirit of the Most High, that it wrought upon Gentiles, and they went forth out of captivity upon the many waters. And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise. And I beheld the wrath of the Most High, that it was upon the seed of my brethren, the wrath of the Most High, that it was upon the seed of my brethren. What was his wrath for? Idolatry. Who did he use? The Christians, the Catholics, to come over here and destroy us. Now this is not, you know, conjecture from the Hebrew Israelites. This is admitted in this book, the Florentine Codex, by who? The Christians and the Catholics themselves. So to sit there and think that they don't know, they know exactly what they did, and they know exactly what is going to happen. All right? 
that it was upon the seed of my brethren, and they were scattered before the Gentiles and were smitten. And it talks about us running into the mountains. I read about that in the um, and hide in the mountains and the dogs of the conquest book. How they didn't, you know, they were just trying to run away and hide. All right. And I beheld the spirit of the Lord, and it was upon the Gentiles, and they did prosper and obtain the land for their inheritance. So they got to take the land for their inheritance for a time. As we were serving our punishment, they became the most highest people at that time. The most high was blessing them at that time. They were able to actually go take over our lands, take over our labor, take over our resources, and the most high had blessed them for a time. While we were drinking the uh, dregs, they were drinking the clarified wine. See that? Let me get that real fast. Let me get that on uh, in Isaiah 51. So it's, it's amazing now because they're admitting all these things that happened. Isaiah 51, towards the end. Let me see where it's at. Let's go to seven, let's just start at 17 and read on down. Isaiah 51 and 17. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. All right, so right now, this is like a, towards the end, telling us to awaken, to remember who we are, to get into these other books, to get this knowledge and understanding. Because we have been drinking from the Lord's fury. All right, we have drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. Yeah, we took all of it. All right. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. So as we wake up, there's nobody to lead us. Everyone's going to lead us, you know, into the ditch. Lead us right back to where we were before. All right. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction, and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets, as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, and rebuke, and the rebuke of thy God. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. We've been given so many lies. Sometimes it gets so, so frustrating because of all the lies that we've been given that we start going down certain, certain whole, you know, streets and roads and we get led into a, you know, to another ditch, you know, another brick wall. All right. 22. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. That's what's happening right now. But I will put it in the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that they may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as the street to them that went over. This is There's so much going on right here. 23 again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over so who do the most high use to afflict us there you go again who do the most high use to afflict us the christians right there let's read it again thou hast waited long for these to turn from their evil ways but because they wish not to turn from their lives thou hast destroyed them Thy vassals, the Christians, brought to an end their wickedness. They conquered them. He used the Christians and the Catholics to afflict us. Right? But then you read 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, Christians, Catholics, the other nations, which have said to thy soul, bow down. They made us bow down to them, right? That we may go over. Right, And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. And we did. And as the street went over. okay, And as the street to them that went over. 
So that cup of trembling, if you go on 22, is going to switch from us to the people the Most High used to afflict us. And right there, I admitted it was the Christians and the Catholics. I'm going to make sure I make that point very, very clear. Let's read 22 again. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as a street to them that went over. Please make sure you guys are following along in your own uh, in your Bibles, okay? Because like I said, now you're starting to see that Isaiah 51 playing out over here. When the Bible, they try to make it seem like that's, it, it, they're very cunning the way they use the Bible because now they make it seem like it only happened over there. It only happened in the so-called Middle East. Nothing happened over here. But this stuff is admitting that they were used, they were brought over here to destroy us. And they're admitting it, admitting it themselves. Let me see. Okay, hold on. Oh, all right. This, I didn't make copies of this. I want you guys to follow along with me. Go to uh, Luke. Let's go to Luke 21. <clears throat> Luke chapter 21. Let's start at... Hmm. Luke 21 and 21, we'll start there. Luke 21 and 21. There you go, there on the other one. All right. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, what they'll try to say is, well, it says Judea right there. So that only happened over there. That only happened in the Middle East when this stuff was happening over here. So they're real slick with it, though. If you go to 20, Luke 21, 21, I have the Strong's Concordance. So I'm going to uh, click on Judea. And this is what I get right here. All right. So you have the feminine of 2453 with 1093 implied. Okay. The Judean land, i.e. Judea, the region of Palestine. Okay. Now, if you click on 1093, this is what you get. Contracted from a primary word, soil, by extension, a region, or the solid part, or the whole of the terrain or the globe, including the occupants in each application, a country, earth, ground, land, world. So these people, it also could just mean your land, or your ground. Doesn't necessarily just have to mean it happened over there in Judea. Because it also happened over here. So you can read 21 and 21. Then let them which are in the land flee to the mountains. Okay, let's read that again. Then let them which are in the land flee to the mountains. And that's exactly what happened here. When the Spanish got here, especially talks about the uh, dogs of the conquest, many of our people knew they couldn't fight the, um, the natives. I mean, sorry, the Spaniards. So they ran to the mountains and they hid. Okay. So let's read that again. Luke 21, 21. Then let them which are in the land flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter here therein too. 
for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So it was already prophesied, you know, that the Most High was going to be angry with us. And he was going to send these people across the ocean to us. So it's just not just, this didn't just happen in the so-called Middle East. This happened here as well. And this was prophesied because of the anger. And you go back to Baruch right there. Okay. Let's see. 12. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow forsaken of many, who for the sins of my children am left desolate. So we were sinning. So we were going to be taken um, slave, into slavery because they departed from the law of the Most High. They do not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of, of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. All right, so skip on down there. 15. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, which who neither reverence old man nor pity child. All right. So because of what we did, he brought these people. But the Bible is written in such a way that they use the word Judean just so that you would think that it only happened over there and that it didn't happen over here. And then if you got people who are telling you not to read anything else, not to look anywhere else, then you would never realize that this stuff was happening over here and it was prophesied to happen over here. And if these was for, if you go to Luke 21, 22, for these be the, uh, the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All the things that are written had to be fulfilled. If he wrote about how they were going to come over the oceans, come over here, and he's going to put the spirit on them to come over here and to destroy us, take over our lands, that had to be fulfilled. And that's what he was doing. Now, just because the um, Gentiles are trying to hide this fulfillment of prophecy, and hide the fact that they were the ones that were used as the vassals to do it. And now they're going to have to suffer the same consequences because they've been committing uh, idolatry. They don't want, they don't want that. So if they now say, well, we don't canonize these books, therefore, um, you know, that's where the world won't read them. That's exactly what they've done. So we go to Luke 21 and 24. Well, hold on. Let's go to 23. Let's continue with 23 again. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them they give suck in those days. Yes, you know, our women who are, who are um, with children. You know, they were raped. The kids were used as, uh, to feed their dogs. They would you know, bash them against the rocks. They would feed them to their dogs. They would cut them into pieces. You know, they, our women were forced to uh, carry huge loads, and they would, uh, if they couldn't, they were so weak because they weren't being fed. They couldn't feed their babies, so they would just leave their babies on the side of the road. And it's there to die. So, so, so again, but woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land. See, now it's, now it's referring to the land. See that? But in there, before, it was trying to say Judea. And wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. So from here, we were led away captive. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So the Jerusalem that was over here was going to be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See how that works? See how that all makes sense? See how, you know, me and the other brethren are putting these, you're being used by the Most High and the Holy Spirit to put these puzzle pieces together. It's crazy because these guys are using wisdom of Solomon to justify many things that they're saying and doing to us. But they're slick with it. You got to really look at what they're doing and how they do it. All right. This is from wisdom of Solomon chapter five. I was like, man, you never want to go to wisdom of Solomon chapter five if you're a Gentile. But look at what they skip. It says, behold, the cries, the tears of the idolaters. I'm not even going to try to read that in, in Latin right there. Um, but it says, this is to say, unhappy we, for we err. Just trying to say this is what we're, we're going to be saying, okay? That is to say, unhappy we, for we erred while we were living on earth. And the straight road of righteous life we saw not. The son of righteous a life did not give us light. Our sinful way tired us. It exhausted us. And our road to ruin vexed us. Our sins put us into dangerous places. 
of what advantage to us were pride, greatness. Remember now, this is us, you know, saying these things, okay? That's what it's saying here. And that's how they wrote it anyways, okay? Of what advantage to us was riches on earth? All such things like smoke, like shadows, fall and confusion. They are like the messenger running fast, like the boat rapidly gliding as if driven by the wind of which nothing is seen whence it, uh, whence it issued, like the bird which hasteneth greatly as it flieth, which goeth leaving no trace. Let me see. I want to continue reading that. I'll read a little bit more. Like the bird arrow, which right swiftly reacheth its mark, nor is it seen whence it, is, whence it issued. Thus it befell us on earth, for we were living but a moment on earth. We swiftly brought our lives to a close because of our sins. Our lives ended, perished. And it says, like these are the words of the idolaters. Like these were weeping their tears, their words of grief, their words of lamentation, which shall never be comforted. But those who know, who obey our Lord God, shall attain his kingdom, his riches, because our Lord God is perfectly enriching. Thus is the word of the Most High, as hath been told above. So it's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much saying that we're idolaters and all these, you know, how much we erred and how unhappy we are because of all the, uh, things that have happened to us as far as the death and destruction that the Christians brought over, you know, and pretty much that we deserved it, you know, because we were idolaters. Now, what you have to look at is on Wisdom of Solomon chapter five, you have to look at where they started and what they skipped when you're reading that chapter. So I had to look for the unhappy we for we erred. So I made a copy of this right here. Let's see. I'm looking for the word erred. Uh, six, five and six. So they skipped up to... Verse six, all right, therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. And you can continue on down, okay? We worried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through uh, deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. So they skipped over to six and just kind of started from there and, apply, and act like that's us you know, not knowing the way and how we erred and everything else, which is true, which is true. We did err. We did mess up. That's true. Most I used uh, the Christians to come and destroy us. That's true. But let's start from one, because now, you know, they only used parts of certain things. We can read the entire thing now and get more understanding. This is why they skipped one through five. <clears throat> Hold on. And that's why, you know, these, these churches, oh, we don't, we don't accept the wisdom of Solomon. We don't accept these books and we don't accept Baruch. And yeah, I wouldn't accept them either because <laughs> once you start to get this other information and put it together, the puzzle is now becoming very clear. Now let's look at one. This is talking about now what happens to us and our, our awakening, okay? Then shall the righteous man stand up in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Who was the one that afflicted us? The Christians, the Catholics, who admitted it? They did. When they see it, the Christians and Catholics and the rest of the world, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. And they, repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he, whom we had sometimes in derision, and a proverb of reproach. Yep, this is, a, this is those people right there, ones you guys had at the bottom. Ones you, had, you were calling all these different names. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the Most High? And his lot is among the saints. Uh, that's going to be one hell of a day, isn't it? 
when they start to realize the truth, which many of the people already are. Now we can read six down and apply it to them because now they're the ones who are the idolaters. They're the ones who just continued with the demon worship and forced us to continue with it as well. And that's what I'm going to get into more in, the, in some of these other videos. But the fact that we found them admitting that they were the ones that were used to afflict us. Now we start reading the Bible, start reading other things. You say, hey, it says afflicted. Who afflicted us? They did. Who afflicted us? The Christians, the Catholics. So they, were, they were proud when they were, you know, and most like gave them the power. They're very proud and they were, they were admitted back then. This is in the 1500s. They already knew. They knew who they were coming over here to get. They knew exactly what they were doing. And now they're, you know, they want to keep it all hidden. That's why they, you got so many people telling us, don't read any other books. The Bible's all we need. You don't need to read anything else. But you saw there in just in Luke 21 and 21, where they switched the word Judea, when it could just be the land. Because that happened over there 60, in 70 AD, and it happened over here. The Most High wasn't just going to, you know, wasn't just going to uh, destroy the southern kingdom. He was going to destroy the northern kingdom as well because they were committing idolatry and going off as well. And that's why this is all part of prophecy. And now the prophecies of us, you know, being awakened and understanding and sharing this with our people as well as the other nations because they've been lied to as well. But you see how slick they are. They skip one through five. Because one through five that you know about our awakening. One through five that you know about how much of a shock it's going to be when the rest of the world realizes that we're the people of the book and what they've been doing to us and how they're going to have to pay. Now, let me see where I have this. I'm going to read this because now this, what we just read right here, <clears throat> especially one through five, was talked about in this article from Hitler about something he said here. It says, uh, the title of it is Hitler said, even in his death, he will start World War III. One of his soldiers asked how. Hitler replied. It says, Hitler said, even in his death, he will start World War III. One of his soldiers asked how. Hitler replied, the day mankind finds out what I was trying to defend this nation, Germany, from then that's the day world war three will start for on that day mankind will learn that i was trying to save my nation from the freemasons the illuminati the jews for if the americans wins the war then they will conquer the world and forever be a slave to the jews and they will try to conquer god do you know who america has in its possession no the soldier replied the Americans has the jewels of God. The Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. What do you mean his jewel, his precious jewels? The soldier asked. <clears throat> Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to the Most High. And they plan on moving these false white Jews into a state of Israel. It doesn't say the state. It says a state. Okay. America is desperate in its attempt to win this war using atom bombs on Japan. America will destroy the whole world in its attempt to conquer it. When America and its Jewish slave masters conquer the world and the world realize I was right. Then all nations will begin a third world war to dethrone America of its rule. Every nation will soon possess atom bombs of their own. It will be the end of the mo uh, end of most of the world as we know it. Why will the Jews control America? The soldier asked. Hitler said, because the white Jews knows that the Negroes are the real children of Israel and to keep America secret the Jews will blackmail America. The Jews will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes knew who they were. Now, this part right here goes with, especially with Solomon chapter five, the first one through five, okay? 
the white citizens of America will be terrified to know that all this time <clears throat> they've been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the children of Israel. They will fear the Most High, will destroy them as he destroyed Egypt for doing the same thing. So the elite, the Illuminati, keeps this a secret at all cost. After I, di after I die, I will one day cause World War III just by this message, which will be like planting a seed in people's minds until it sprouts once they nurture that seed and seek more truth. That's very, that's seeking more truth, starting to search, starting to look in other books, okay? And learn Hitler was right. I did the world a favor, okay? But I'm not gonna continue with that. That's what that was the main part I wanted to get. These other nations already know what's up. They know exactly what's happening. So yeah, so the Most High said, the Holy Spirit moved me to change the direction of this video. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out to you. So you can see how they admitted that they were used as vassals of the Most High to come here and destroy us for committing idolatry. But they've fallen into exactly the same trap and been committing idolatry the entire time and, continue, and having us continue to provide power for their demons by making us participate in their idolatry, in their religions. And now the Most High is taking that cup from us and putting it in the hands of the other nations. I hope this was a very enlightening video and that it just opens your eyes to so much and help us rise to you see who are the people who are trying to keep us from realizing the whole picture. There's more than just, you know, one third of the picture. This is now showing us the whole picture. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.